Hey guys, Rob here and welcome back to the channel. Well, I'm back today with another how-to video and what I'm gonna show you today is how to change the wheels on your BBR Pagani Wire Dynastia to these new Tempesta wheels. Now, this model from BBR came with silver Chinkway style wheels. Uh, the car that I believe still resides in Hong Kong actually has these gold Tempesta wheels fitted to it. So uh, these are the correct Tempesta wheels with a nearly flat face on the front uh, and more concave on the back. Now myself and Eddie from MIY Mini Models uh, have designed these wheels as a direct replacement for the BBR wheels. Uh, I think the model looks much, much better. It's definitely more accurate to the real car with these gold Tempesta wheels on it. Uh, so what I've done, I've tried to make this tutorial as detailed as possible. Uh, it's not super difficult to do this wheel swap, uh, you just have to take your time in a couple of little areas. So uh, I'll put all the links in the description below to MIY Mini Models uh, where you can buy these wheels. Uh, they come unpainted so you'll have to paint them yourself, uh, but then it is a pretty straightforward swap. Uh, to remove the old BBR ones and fit these new ones. So uh, yeah, all the links in the description below to MIY Mini Models to purchase these wheels. Uh, and just follow my tutorial, take your time. Uh, and if you wanna do this wheel swap on your model, uh, I think you'll agree that it looks much, much better with the correct wheels on the model. So uh, sit back, relax, uh, and enjoy this tutorial. Started with this modification. Now the first thing we have to do is remove the model from the base. Now these are screwed on from underneath the base and then they put this black felt over to cover the holes. Now if you use your fingernail you can actually feel the depressions uh, where the screw holes are. So the best way to unscrew this model without damaging the base is put the plexiglass cover back onto the base. Now hold the base and the plexiglass cover together and turn it upside down. This way the base is uh, steady and the model is safe. Now just use a sharp X-Acto knife uh, and just cut the felt out uh, where you can feel it with your fingernail. I just push my fingernail into that hole uh, and it shows the edge in the felt. So just make sure you use a sharp knife uh, that will cut the felt easily and that will expose the screw holes as you can see there with the first one. So again, yep, just put your finger in the depression to fill the hole and then just trace the knife around the hole to remove the felt. Now this is how uh, a lot of models are actually fixed to bases, uh, but some of the high-end resin models actually have a separate leather layer on the bottom of the base, uh, which just has to be peeled off to expose the screws. Uh, but this particular BBR model uh, pretty easy with this layer of felt underneath so uh, quite easy to do this and you can remove a lot of other models this same way now that you've exposed the screws you can flip the model back over just make sure that you hold the uh, plexiglass case tight to the base uh, so you don't damage the model and then we can now remove the plexiglass cover again to expose the model and the base now we have to unscrew the model, so uh, I just use a Phillips head screwdriver here. Uh, I just hold the model carefully and keep the edge on its base, just so that you don't damage the model. Do whatever's comfortable for you. Some people like to wear gloves when they handle the models, but I like to have the extra grip uh, of my fingers on there rather than having a sometimes slippery uh, lint glove. This is just the way I do it. Always take extreme care when you're removing it. Doesn't matter to me if the base falls away. You just want to make sure that you're holding the model steady and not too close to the work surface as you don't want to break a mirror uh, or other parts of the model. So I just work the screws loose front and rear. It doesn't take much to release the model from the base and there we have it. Now I'll just put the model base off to the side as I'm going to reuse it once the conversion is done. Um, but you can see there's just three screw holes in the bottom of these resin models. This is very common how they fit resin models to the bases. Uh, so this is pretty standard issue. 
Now what we want to do is uh, start disassembling the model. So uh, what I like to do, I use some uh, seating foam. Now this is nice uh, squishy foam. Uh, and I just cut some extra little blocks with an angle on there. Uh, this is to cradle the model so I don't damage it. I just put a nice clean cloth, a bit of old t-shirt material uh, on top of the foam so the foam doesn't mark the paint. And what this does, as I said, it creates a little cradle to hold the model. Now I left a gap at the top there for the mirrors to sit into so that they don't get broken off. So uh, this is the best way I find to handle these models when you're doing a small modification and you don't want to damage the model. So it doesn't move, the foam blocks hold it in place and this makes it very easy to disassemble the model. Now there's four screws as you can see in the base and this bottom base plate is actually a piece of metal on this model. Sometimes they're made out of resin uh, but this one is metal so uh, these are just screwed into the resin shell of the model. So just take your time and uh, unscrew these. You can see I'm holding the front of the model uh, while I'm putting a bit of pressure on the screwdriver. Um, just make sure that the model, where you hold it, there's no canards or any delicate pieces. Just make sure that where you hold the model with your second hand, uh, that you're not going to damage any parts. Note also on the bottom of this base plate, it says made in China. So this particular model, although BBR do make models in Italy as well, uh, this particular range of Pagani Wire Dynasties were actually made in China. So some are in Italy, some are made in China. Now the metal base plate can be removed uh, and it shows the crude internals of these resin models. Now everything is basically hot glued together. All the interior parts are held in by dobs of hot glue, as are the axles. You can see uh, where the axle runs through the body. There's a big dob of hot glue there that's what holds the axle and the wheel assemblies into the body. So what we need to do is to cut away that hot glue to be able to remove the wheels and the axles. Now the wheels and axles usually come out in one part. You just have to remove that hot glue uh, that holds the axle into the resin body. Now I use a combination of things. I use a very sharp X-Acto knife. Um, just be very careful. I am using quite a bit of pressure here to cut through hot glue. Uh, I haven't found another way to do it yet, uh, but I do use a little pair of pointed snippers as well to try and... Some models have very large blobs of hot glue, so I can use the nippers and actually try and snip out a large portion of it, and then I can actually keep removing the finer stuff with the X-Acto knife. So this is where the, uh, the foam cradle underneath the model really comes into value. Uh, you can keep rotating the model around and uh, keep trying to remove the glue. Now as I said in the intro, this is a reasonably easy modification to change the wheels. I would have to say that this is the most difficult part is removing all the glue. Now I would recommend that you take your time with this step um, so that you don't do any damage to the model. Uh, and just make sure that you're using a sharp knife as a blunt knife blade will usually do more damage than a sharp one. Now I also just use a small flat bladed screwdriver uh, just to see and use it as a pry bar to see if there's any movement in the axle. Now if it doesn't move at all, don't put too much pressure on here, you don't want to damage other parts of the model, uh, but if there's too much pressure and it's not moving at all, you need to cut some more glue out of it, as I've done there. So there's a little bit of movement there, uh, but it just I'm not comfortable with the fact that it's still very tight. So I just go back with the X-Acto knife and just trim more of the hot glue out. When it's basically freed itself, uh, you will be able to pry it out very easily. So just take your time and you won't do any major damage to the model. 
So with this particular model where they've squirted a big blob of hot glue in there, uh, some has seeped underneath the axle as well, which is extremely hard to cut out. Uh, and there you go. So that side was held in a little bit more, uh, and you can see all the remainder of the hot glue, and some of that was under the axle as well. And that's basically the hardest part of this conversion, is to remove uh, these old wheels and axles. And there's some more hot glue removed. And now it's time to uh, have a look. You can see here that most of the hot glue is out. There's still a remainder of hot glue in there, and I will actually cut that out before I try and install the new wheels. As you can see there, having a look, there's no damage to the front of the model or the paintwork or the mirrors. Now comes the back. I've sped this section up because I actually spent quite a bit of time uh, trying to remove all this glue from the back of the model. There seemed to be a lot on top of the axle, uh, between the axle and the actual brake parts, the resin parts, and also underneath the axle as well. So sometimes you get lucky with a model and it doesn't have much hot glue in there holding it in. Other times you get a model where it's just had a really big squirt of hot glue uh, and it's just a nightmare to get out. So again, I just try and use the nippers, my X-Acto knife and my flat bladed screwdriver. Uh, if you guys come up with another method uh, for an easier way to remove this hot glue, uh, by all means leave a comment in the comments section below um, but this I find has just been the best way to uh, remove these axles that are hot glued in. Now again I try and um, see if there's any movement there in the axle uh, no luck there so I've just got to keep continuing to uh, cut all this hot glue out and the boy there was a lot And as I said, this is the hardest part of these conversions, changing wheels on resin models. It's just getting the excessive amount of hot glue out. Now some other brands of models have been far, far easier than this. Uh, when I did all my Pico Pagani Zonda uh, repaints, there was hardly any hot glue used at all. Uh, and they only took about two or three minutes to pull out. Um, so they're all different. Some GT Spirit models have been really hard to get out. Uh, some have been easy, so it just depends. I have been using a bit of pressure here to, to try and get this glue out. Um, you can see the model moving around a little bit, but that's why I put it in this foam cradle, just to protect it. And that way you can move the foam cradle around also, um, just to make it the most comfortable position for you to to cut this out which is what I do I just spin it around the other way so that I can uh, comfortably work with a knife and remove glue from the other side so very frustrating this was and this is sped up so this footage so you can imagine how long it took me I think I was probably working on the back axle for maybe 10 or 12 minutes in total to try and remove all the hot glue so extremely difficult um, but just as I say I can't stress enough just to take your time uh, be very careful with these sharp knives uh, when you're using a bit of pressure uh, you don't want to slip with a sharp exacto knife because it will slice your fingers open uh, and hopefully you'll only need a band-aid and not be going to the hospital so just take your time Try not to use too much pressure, uh, but that's what the cradle's for. Protect the model. So just continuing to work out the glue and keep cutting it away. It's very hard when the glue goes underneath the axle. There is a slot in the resin body that the axle runs through. Uh, if the glue gets in underneath there, it's very difficult to pry out. You can try and grab the wheel and pull it up like I did there, um, but I wasn't really having much success in the beginning. And then I could feel it starting to uh, starting to move a little bit. 
Um, you've just got to keep cutting the glue until you feel it move. Don't force the axle out if you just don't feel it moving. Um, and then I just use the flat bladed screwdriver again. Didn't use much pressure this time and it came out easy. So I knew that I had enough glue removed. You can still see there's a lot of glue on there, uh, but there was enough glue removed to actually pry it out. So that is the front and rear wheel assemblies out of the model. Now as I said, that is the hardest part of this wheel conversion job uh, and it's all easy from here on in. Now as you can see, there's no damage to the model at all by putting it in this foam cradle covered with a soft cloth. This is the best way to do any work on a model, even if you want to repaint an interior and you want to try and pull out uh, the interior part cutting out the hot glue, always a good idea to use one of these foam cradles. Okay, let's tackle the wheels. So uh, usually the wheels will just twist off the axle. So I use the nippers or you could use some pliers to hold the axle so the axle doesn't spin. And then just grab the wheel and twist it forwards and backwards to twist it off the splines of the axle. So there's one side and then we'll just repeat that procedure for the other side of the front axle and they come off easy enough. Now as you can see the hot glue is actually holding the brake assemblies onto the axle and the stem of the wheel goes into the brake rotor hole onto the axle so uh, we're just going to leave that aside for now and we'll do the same with the rear so use a pair of pliers or cutters just to grab the axle and turn the wheel forward and backwards and it will come off the axle very easy. Now this side was a little bit different uh, because there was quite a lot of hot glue uh, glued into the axle and the brake rotor and this did not want to slide out too easy so what you'll see happens here is the actual axle comes out of the wheel but the brake rotor is still in the wheel. I think there was a little bit of glue residue in there um, but it still slipped out pretty easy. Now you can see the hole in the back of the brake assembly here is very large so um, it wasn't a center fit it was very loose and the hot glue was holding it together. Now it's time to remove the tires from the stock wheels. Now I did this the wrong way, uh, you can see I'm really struggling to pull the tyres off. What you need to do is actually pull the tyres off the back of the wheel, not the front, as the front of the wheels have a lip. So rather than damage those wheels, uh, you may want to use them for another model. Uh, pull the tyres off the rims backwards. So don't do that with those two, uh, you'll see here we're going to keep the tyres, we're going to reuse those. Uh, you'll see here they come off much easier when you pull the tyres off from the back. So always a learning experience with custom models uh, and maybe I can make the mistakes and show you guys uh, so you get it right. Okay, so those wheels, I'm going to save those for another model later down the track and it's time for the new wheels. Now these are my new 3D printed wheels. Uh, I basically designed all the sizes so they were a direct replacement for the BBR wheels. And I had my friend Eddie at www.miyminimodels.com uh, 3D print these up for me. Now these are the correct Tempesta wheels. So they're pretty much a flat face on the front, a little bit of curvature, uh, but the back wheels have much more of a concave spoke. And I just spray painted these in a Tamiya TS Gold number 21. And then I added a clear coat over the top of them. So yeah, these tyres, if you order these from MIY Mini Models, uh, these rims, sorry, uh, you'll have to paint them yourself, but that's a pretty easy thing. Now the front rims uh, will slip straight into the tyres. These are the same size as the, uh, the wheels that came on the BBR model so these Tempesta wheels on the front are a 20 inch wheel and the wheels that came on the model were 20 inch all the way around so that's a very straightforward fit they fit straight onto the front rims no problem at all uh, and other than painting the center lock cap silver uh, they're good to go 
Now the rear wheels, the rear wheels on the Pagani model, the silver ones, were a 20 inch. These Tempesta wheels are actually a 21 inch on the rear. So they're one inch bigger in diameter, uh, which is around one millimeter bigger, uh, which is gonna make it a tight fit to get the tires over. So what you wanna do here is use a hairdryer, just heat the rubber tire up a little bit to make it a little bit softer uh, and make it a little bit more pliable. It doesn't need a lot of heat, just be careful of the decals on the front of the tire. Uh, I just heat it a little bit on the front, a little bit on the back, turn the tire around a little bit and heat it all the way around. I just have it on a low heat setting on the hairdryer. And then this will enable you to uh, stretch it over the new 21 inch Tempesta wheels. So that's a little bit warm to the touch, um, but still needs a little bit of uh, stretching to get it over the wheel. I just try not to press uh, on the center of the wheel, just hold the new 3D printed wheel on the edge of the wheel because you don't want to break the center out and break the spokes. But that works a treat just with a little bit of heat from the hair dryer. Uh, and those original tires will stretch a little bit and go around the new 21 inch Tempesta wheels. As I say, if you're gonna press the wheel to get the tire on the right position, uh, just put some pressure on the outside edge of the rim and not the center. Those spokes are quite delicate and you don't wanna break them. So we just have to repeat that procedure uh, for the next tire little bit of heat on the front, not too much. Uh, just be careful of the decals. You don't want to heat those up and burn them, uh, unless you want to remove them, of course, and then you can just use a, uh, a Q -tip, cotton Q-tip, uh, dipped in a little bit of Tamiya enamel thinner, uh, and that will wipe the decals right off the tire and not damage the tire. So now that I've heated that tire up, it's a little bit warm to touch and a little bit soft, and I will just gently stretch it over the new wheel and then slide it all the way on being careful not to press in the center of the wheel and I'll just put those down on the workbench and just uh, they're the same width as the rear tire so you just sit that on the bench and push on the rim and that will center it perfectly so that is the front and rear Tempesta wheel set so as you can see uh, the front ones are narrower almost a flat face and the rears are much wider and much more of a concave face. Okay, now it's time to fit these models. So uh, we're going to get the foam cradle out again. Uh, always use this to work on the model just to protect all the paint, the windows. Uh, we just don't want to damage anything. Now I'm going to start with the front here uh, because these uh, brakes stayed on the axle this will be a very straightforward fit once we get the axle back into the model the new wheels will slip straight over the axles as there's a hole in the back of the stem on the front wheels now what you want to do here it's important to make sure that you have the orientation of the brake rotor correct now the brake rotors are at the uh, rear of the front wheel angled slightly towards the bottom so this step is just trial and error so what I like to do is get it into position check that it's centered most of the time this axle will go back into the body the same way I had it upside down there so you can see I've turned this around uh, so that the brake calipers are in the right position and then I'll push that back into the slot now the way this is designed, there is a slot in the body there and the axle fits up hard against the slot. As you can see there. So that is basically, they designed that into the model so that uh, when they assemble the models, uh, they don't have to mess around with the ride height. They just push the axle all the way in. Now I just test fit the wheels on there again. Uh, check that they're sitting how they should be, which is uh, just inside the lip. They're not flush with the lip, just in a little bit. I'd say probably half a mil uh, to a mil. 
but you always just test fit it first make sure they sort of look the same both sides uh, and then you can proceed gluing uh, gluing the axles and the wheels on so yeah just double check triple check everything make sure it's how it's supposed to be and then when it comes time to glue you know they'll go on and they'll be where they want to be when you've applied the glue because you don't want to go through the process of removing all the glue okay now let's move on to the rear so I actually forgot to press record when I glued the front ones in but you can just follow the step here on the rear ones you can see at the top of the screen there uh, I've already glued the wheels on and glued the axles back in um, but it's the same procedure front and rear so uh, you see here I basically putting the axle in the slot and making sure that there's an equal amount of axle sticking out either side that gives you a better idea of seeing that the axle fits all the way up into the slot and then these go a particular way as well there's a larger section on the bottom of these hubs that goes up when you're looking at the model now what I'm doing here I'm just adding some hot glue onto the top of the axle so that uh, that will hold the brake assembly in piece in place I should say now if when you disassemble the rear axle on your model uh, the axle comes out with both brake rotors still attached you don't have to do this step you can just re-glue uh, the axle back in like the front but in my case these were both loose so I had to glue these back in there first so just a dub of hot glue I would just wipe the string off the hot glue and then glue that brake assembly back in place just hold it there until the hot glue starts to set a little bit but before it's too hard I'll turn the model sideways and just make sure that that axle is in the center of the brake disc as you can see there so I've just moved it I just hold it there until the hot glue starts to cool uh, this will make it a lot easier to slip the wheel on and glue it on in place so just make sure that that axle is in the center of the brake rotor and I've done that both sides there is a little bit of movement with hot glue so you can um, bend it a little bit to get the wheels on now I want to check that the uh, rear wheels slip onto the axles okay these are just going to slip straight over the axle and you'll actually have a little bit more to play with on the rear so these would actually uh, push in and sit too far in um, so you just have to make sure that when you glue them in place you just have the same amount of lip overhang on the fender so you want about a half, half a mil to a mil overlap uh, if you're unsure how much it was before you disassemble the model uh, take a photo of it with the standard wheels on and see how much gap now I just put a very small amount of hot glue on the end of the new wheel stub and then I'll push that onto the old axle just making sure that I've got the right fender overhang that the wheel is tucked in enough and again just make sure that it sits uh, vertical straight up and down and in right position and again you can just basically hold that uh, until the glue starts to harden so as you can see there I've left about a mil uh, overhang of the fender which is what my model came with so I'm basically just fitting the uh, wheels exactly the same as they did in the BBR factory so again I'm just test fitting this before I glue it on always test fit first uh, before you add the glue and then same as the last wheel so just a dob of hot glue on the end of the wheel stub and then slip that stem of the wheel through the opening of the brake disc and onto the metal axle so again just make sure that you've got the same overhang of the fender to the tire on that side as well and I just basically check that the wheels are sitting straight 
check that I've got about the same uh, height and the same overhang both sides before the hot glue fully dries. Now I guess this is why they use hot glue on these models when they assemble them. Uh, it's a lot quicker for them to assemble it rather than waiting for other types of glue to dry. Um, but really happy with the way that came out. Now I just basically repeat what BBR did. So another big dob of hot glue either side and this will hold the axle back in place into the body. Now this will dry rock hard and it won't move and that's basically exactly the same procedure as I did on the front. So put the axle in, check the overhangs, glue the wheels on and then some final dobs of glue to hold the axles on. And there we have it, that's the hardest part done. So uh, again make sure that you've got the orientation of the brake rotors right. Uh, now we can reassemble the model which there's not much involved in that at all. So um, we're just going to screw the floor back in place. So the metal floor plate uh, will go back on. This just drops back in easily and we can use the original four black screws that came with the model and screw the floor back in. So in this instance I started with the front of the model, uh, just held it up tight to the front diffuser and screwed the front two screws in and then I'll continue with the rear of the model as well. So uh, as you can see, not super difficult. I would say that the hardest part of this conversion uh, is to remove all the original glue and to m remove the original wheels and axles. Um, but if I think if you follow these steps like I did, uh, you'll have no issues. Uh, make sure that you get yourself one of these foam cradles uh, for whenever you're working on expensive models. Uh, always a good idea to use that to protect it. Now we just use a smaller Phillips head screwdriver just to uh, do the final screws into the base to pull them up nice and tight. These do look rather crude inside these resin models but the exterior and the details that you do see uh, are far better than most production models to be honest so uh, that's where the money goes and especially these ones where they're wrapped in full carbon fiber decal. A lot of time for these, even the manufacturers that mass produce these models uh, to get these right. Now that's the model. The wheel swap is done. So all we have to do now, well you can put it in your display case like this if you want, but I am going to put it back onto its leather base that it came on. Uh, and I basically just line up the, I sit the tips of the screws into the base they will find their ways back into the original holes. Notice that these uh, these um, pins that go underneath the model between the base had a couple of uh, metal uh, screw washers on there just for some extra spacing. I made sure that they went back on as these wheels will basically uh, be the same diameter as what was on the model. So the model should sit on the base with the tires touching the base exactly how it was standard. So I do the back up first, then I do the front up, that will bring the front down towards the leather base. Then I go back towards the back, do those two screws up a little bit more which will pull the tire down uh, until it touches the base. And then I'll go back to the front of the model. You can see there the tires are touching the base, just needs another little couple of turns. And then the front tires are still off the base a little bit. I just do that another couple of times until the screw stops and that is the model screwed back onto the base. So overall really happy with the way this little transformation came out. Uh, as I said if you want to get a set of these wheels yourself they do come unpainted um, but they are available from MIY Mini Models. Uh, while that is screwed onto the base um, just check that your wheels are sitting vertical that you haven't screw the model down too tight uh, and that way when the glue fully goes off uh, your wheels are straight. But that is the BBR Pagani Wire Dynastia in purple carbon now with the correct gold Tempesta wheels on it. Um, I think it drastically looks better than the silver wheels that the model came with uh, and I hope that this tutorial 
uh, will help you guys out if you want to do that conversion yourself. So uh, be brave, take your time, just be careful, uh, and this is something that you could do no problem at all. So I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. Uh, if you're new to the channel, uh, why not subscribe? Uh, don't forget to smash that like button if you like this video. Uh, and don't forget to go and check out my merch too. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed today's video. I've got quite a few more videos to publish before the end of the year uh, for 2019. So stay tuned. And thanks for watching Rob's Model Cars.